<laughs> so nandito kayong dalawa, eh, isa lang ibig sabihin niyan, West Philippine Sea pa rin tayo. Right? Ako po. Uh, so what else do we need to unpack? I mean, uh, yesterday, the other day, I think it was yesterday, we had uh, Ray Powell here. Tinanong ko siya, kung totoo ba na parang may digression in policy between the National Security Council and the Defense Department. May parang hindi pagkakasundo. Kaya nangyari yung nangyari doon sa Ayungin, the Ayungin incident. So, um, first of all, how credible is this, Ronald? Or, or like Ray Powell said, it's normal that within the administration, uh, you have people who, who disagree. Kung, Well, hindi, hindi naman tayo Communist Party ng China. Hindi naman tayo People's Liberation Army na walang demokrasya sa bansa na yon. So, madaling sabihin na isa lamang ang kanilang uh, direksyon. No? Uh, sa atin ay uh, kinakailangan ng mga consultation, kinakailangan ng mga meeting uh, dahil wala tayong uh, uh, isang presidente na president for life. Kaya uh, nakikita rin dito yung in a positive note, nakikita rito yung mga hindi differences, kundi yung mga debate in terms of strategy at saka tactics. No? Uh, kaya ang packaging dyan ng mga kalaban ay hati-hati kayo, nag-aaway-aaway kayo. Mukhang hindi naman. No? Mukhang hindi naman. Uh, at uh, ito kasi yung one of the few times na yung ating uh, NABSO o yung Naval Special Operations Group ay nasa lang dito sa pagsupply ng BRP Sierra Madre. Huwag natin kalimutan na itong mga differences ng mga tactics na ito ay in response dun sa scaling up ng China para harangin yung ating simpleng, simpleng, simpleng pagsupply sa about two dozen soldiers natin sa BRP Sierra Madre. Huwag natin, uh, huwag natin kalimutan, baka maligaw tayo eh. Itong uh, mga differences in terms of tactics ay naghahanap tayo ng tamang kombinasyon para mabigyan natin ng supply yung ating mga sundalo sa BRP Sierra Madre. Okay, At makita natin dito mm -hmm. na naggrabe yung response ng China dito sa pangyayaring ito. No? Kaya uh, ako, mas doon ko tinitignan, Patrick, yung pangyayari. Right. Rather than uh, pagkakaiba ng mga strategiya at saka taktika ng ating armed forces. Okay, uh, but I'd like to ask uh, Richard here, no? do you think that the use uh, by Navy SEALs of the Defense Department or the AFP, is, is that, should we take that as an indication that the AFP is um, increasingly impatient with measured transparency and they feel that it doesn't work? Well, it's inevitable. No? Nasa, we were in an unprecedented situation kung saan after almost six years of uh, quiet diplomacy, if I can, if I can put it uh, politely, under President Duterte. And now, essentially, you know, you have a complete green light for the Philippines to uh, assert its claim. So, medyo siguro, at yung iba, medyo may pent-up frustration built over those Is years. Is it working, medyo Richard? Over... Is measured transparency working? Ganito na lang. My understanding of everything that has happened right now is necessary but not sufficient. Right? I think may value yung mutual defense treaty natin with the U.S. Kaya nga hindi pa rin tayo binabaril ng mga Chino. I think may value in transparency initiative in the sense that it, it highlights what a bully China is. But as things stand, obviously they're not sufficient to prevent this kind of situation whereby completely binabuli tayo ng China. And the optics is not good for China, but it's also not very inspiring for the Philippines. Yeah. So clearly something has to change. Ang tanong kasi dito is, when you talk about tactical changes, because the strategy has mm -hmm. been set by President Marcos Jr. already, magkakaroon talaga ng hidwa yan, magkakaroon talaga ng disagreements yan, because we are in really uncharted territories here. And you can see even the Chinese are also scrambling and trying to wonder what is their own Goldilocks level of bullying whereby it comes short of activating the Mutual Defense Treaty. I'm sure there are also tensions within us and our friends mm -hmm. abroad, particularly the Americans, in terms of ito bang mutual defense treaty yung guidelines na, do we have to revise the guidelines mm -hmm. to make it relevant to a gray zone? Because I remember very well, I was writing something about this yesterday. I went back to my notes. In 2019, nung nangyari yung Reed Bank, then Ambassador Sung King said that the MTT should also apply to militia attacks, gray zone attacks. And then Secretary Pompeo, eh, he released a policy paper in middle of around this time in 2019, whereby sinabi niya, while neutral sila dun sa status of disputed land features, pagdating dun sa mga atolls or shoals, mm -hmm. like Second Thomas Shoal, na nasa loob na ating exclusive economic zone, they stand with us in terms of exercising our 
exclusive economic zone rights. Meaning, pagdating sa second Thomas Shoal, may level of commitment din ng US. Not to mention, may troops tayo dyan. So, cover talaga yan ang MDT. So, ang tanong ngayon is, how do you tweak the MDT, especially the guidelines of MDT, to make it relevant also to gray zone attacks? Ang napaka-aggressive na ganito. I think is going to pull up something and show yeah. us that, in fact, it has been revised, yeah. right? Ed? Richard, this, this, uh, this, uh, this is something we pulled from uh, the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command mm. website. This is a legal guidance or briefing paper for the Indo-Pacific Command as of uh, um, uh, September, October 2023, last year. And it, and it right. was reported by the Indo-PACOM commander to the U.S. Senate, mm -hmm. okay? And, this is uh, an update. This is specific, pa nga eh, prepared specifically for the Sierra Madre. And second Thomas Show. Right. So it's it's quite applicable. Uh, the, the, what's really what's really interesting is dito sa bantang page three. Uh, let's go straight to dun sa U.S. defense commitment right. to the Philippines. This is how they now interpret uh, eto, the MDT at at least as of September last year. Uh, okay. The position is clear of the U.S. Uh, as reaffirmed. Armed attack. Okay. But what, so, what, so what you know, you, 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 you know, issue eh. the armed attack, it creates a very high threshold. Yeah, yeah. but they're more specific Here. now. They've Here. defined it. Okay. Um, okay. Where is that? Uh, what constitutes It's not defined, attack? but as a yeah. matter of international law. Mm. The U.S. has long taken the position that uh, an attack uh, applies uh, against any illegal, illegal use, use of, of force. force. Now, how do you define illegal use of force? Mm. Not limited by law to kinetic armed attack or the use of munitions. In other words, even if you don't use munitions, it's non-kinetic, it can qualify as illegal use of force and therefore an armed attack. My problem is that this is not as clearly reflected in the statements we're seeing from Blinken, from President Biden. Oh, and right. President Biden always stops at this level. Mm. So this level is not clarified. Kaya sabi ko, 2019 pa lang, there was already push for some revisions in the guidelines. We're not talking mm. about provisions. Bago na, Richard. So, this is clear. But the problem Baka is... Hindi, hindi, hindi pa lang ni that's ni my Blinken problem. You, you ni... don't see this because this part, this is the most important. Now, yung definition of arm attack also applies to any illegal use of force and any illegal use of force not limited to kinetic. Is almost meeting what we're seeing right now yes, yes. so my problem here is wait before we proceed richard it's we the just signaling like to, is not clear uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let the audience uh, appreciate what is meant by kinetic arm that attack meaning right. say yeah. hindi kailangan magpaputok ng barrel yeah. right Bok, parang ganun, no? yeah the use of munitions that's what is referred to as kinetic so it can all. It could also include non-kinetic attacks that result in death, injury, injury, damage, or destruction. But mind you, again, this is U.S. Pacific Command. This is the military. Right. In the end, it's a political decision. It's a political decision. That's why you want to hear this from the State Department, Secretary Blinken. You yeah. want to hear this also from President Biden. And you have to have certain intimations whereby what China is doing is almost meeting this. Because we we can play a lawyer's game here, yeah. right? Yeah, that's and true. say, oh well, that still doesn't meet. At the same time, the challenge because it's uh, America and Philippines is that you still have to have a certain degree of strategic ambiguity. Bakit yeah. mm. Because if you're super specific, then China says, "Ayun pala, eh. so yeah. pwede parin yung mga bilang." The problem, Richard, is the this document is super specific. And in fact, I'd like to point out, Ronald, you know, that it, at the Shangri-La dialogue, the president did mention that injuries of Filipino soldiers would cross the Rubicon. Yeah, yeah, would be would, would yeah. might might lead the Philippines into invoking the treaty. Tinanong in that same forum, si uh, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, he was more evasive on that matter. But at the same time, we have something on paper, something like this. So, hindi lang pala sa Pilipinas ang may medyo may interagency. Right, hindi na kaka. Our friends also on the other side are also having probably some you know uh, clarification and alignment they have to mm. do between the state department position but because i you see this was not coming out in the statements that biden made during the trilateral summit mm -hmm. it stopped at here dito sa taas eh. kaya ako, i always said there has to be clarification on any illegal use of force we see that the level of the indo pay and what we saw in no, no, and, policy, and, yeah. and what we saw in Ayungin on june 17 is an example would, would fall under all of this right ronald uh, illegal use of force well, non-kinetic yeah and resulting in a cut finger, an injury. Yeah, right? Uh, actually, hindi lang dito nangyayari yan eh. Uh, nangyari din dyan dun sa border skirmishes ng China at saka India. Kung maalala nyo, no, yung uh, a few years back, nagkaroon ng ganyang klase na uh, confrontation. Uh, yeah. Walang gumamit ng armas, walang gumamit ng kanyon, walang gumamit ng mga military assets. 
at saka infrastructure, uh, ang gamit ay halos katulad na nakikita natin, mga pamalo, mga itak, no, mga sibat, no, yun yung naging confrontation. Yung mga initial uh, confrontation between China and India, doon sa clashes na yun, walang casualties. Pero yung, yung uh, at a particular time, nagkaroon ng casualties. Merong dalawampung Indians yung namatay at may apat na Chinese yung namatay. Pero walang pwede yun, walang barilan. Ibig sabihin, yung ganitong klaseng clashes can also cause uh, casualties beyond yung right thumb na raputol. No? Ang uh, gusto ko lang, uh, lang pag-usapan ay yung uh, sinasabi kanina, tinatanong mo, uh, Patrick, whether nag-fail ba yung measured uh, transparency. transparency. Dapat tignan natin yung measured transparency not as a strategy, as one component of a more sophisticated, mm -hmm. more comprehensive strategy. Mm -hmm. No, yung measured transparency is part part of a strategy. Hindi siya hindi siya yung strategy. Yun ang dapat nating maunawaan, right. uh -huh. no? Ah, uh, alimbawa, <laughs> yung measured strategy is a cup half full, half empty. Meron siyang successes, pero meron din siyang limits. Katulad nga ng sabi ni ni Richard. Alimbawa, nasasaktan ng China dun sa cup half full. Yung uh, pag-unite ng a large section ng mundo dun sa aggression, laban sa aggression ng China. No, G7, no, even NATO, EU, uh, Quad, uh, etc. ay uh, sumusuporta sa atin. That is a success of measured transparency, of exposing yung aggression ng China laban sa isang napakaliit na bansa, napakaliit na military power, katulad natin. No? Dapat makita nga natin yan. Pinakita nyo kanina, Ed, Patrick, yung mga presence ng uh, uh, PLA Navy uh, battleships, di ba, na pinakita nyo kanina. Hindi na yan gray zone tactics. Hindi na yan yung uh, dating uh, sinasabi natin na uh, cabbage strategy. Medyo nag a din mismo yung China. Halimbawa, just yesterday, na-monitor na yung Shandong uh, Carrier Strike Force ng China at lahat ng kanilang uh, 055 uh, 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 battleships ay lahat ngayon papunta dito sa South China Sea. Ibig sabihin, yung buong South China fleet ng China ay ngayon ay gumagalaw. Hindi natin kung ano yung kanilang objective. Yan ba ay long, long, long distance military exercises? Yan ba ay pag-scale up ng... Uh, ng uh, ng kanilang nakikitang uh, possibility ng pag-invoke ng Mutual Defense Treaty? O yan ba ay reaction dun sa uh, suporta sa atin ng buong mundo dito sa mga maliliit na insidenteng ito? Pero ang nakikita natin ngayon ay halos yung buong South China Sea ng China is moving. Is moving. Pwedeng kunyan, pwedeng bahagi yan ng kanilang scaling up at pambubuli no? na... Uh, na nakita natin dito sa incident nitong June 17, no? Uh, pwedeng yan ay reaction doon sa possibility na pag-invoke ng mutual defense treaty. Parang winawarning na tayo. But I think we have to Wag clarify, Ron, I, I think you cannot see it from there. That's why it was very clear the fine print, no? This includes legal opinion analysis that does not necessarily reflect official U.S. government okay. position. So I see this more as, I don't want to be dismissive, but it still looks to me like a recommendation paper rather than the final position of the Biden administration. Yeah. And I'm not surprised by this because these debates were happening Trump time pa lang. Diba? I just mentioned 2019 pa lang. So nothing surprises me here. What I'm wondering is, will this be reflected as the final position of the Biden administration beyond? Because it's the caveats that counts to me. Eh? I know this is a game. This is a lawyer's game, uh -huh. right? So the caveats is what I always read. Eh? Kaya sabi ko, wait lang. Basahin ko muna sa baba. Nakita ko kagat. There is a big, big caveat there. So we have to put pressure on our friends. Okay, I know that you want to have strategic ambiguity, but this is more ambiguity than strategy because it's not 100% working. Tayo naman mga Pilipino, I think instead of fighting amongst each other and, 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 you know, and not appreciating what's there, we should look at what necessary new components we have to bring into the table. So, yeah. so, so um, Pero alam should, naman natin, the AFP, Richard, di ba? Uh, Richard, alam natin, Richard, na itong mga nakasulat na ito do not necessarily govern the actuations of a superpower. No? Uh, nakita natin sa kasaysayan a lot of times na yung mga fine print na nakasulat na yan ay mismo yung gumawa niyan ay hindi niya sinusunod. 
Diba? Well, given na yan, but I'm just saying oh. even this one has a caveat na it's not the final okay. policy. You're saying even yeah. if final policy yan, hindi pa rin maasahan. Uh, our point yes. is, this is where our, you know, this is where we have to be careful when we deal with China. We have to make sure we got the backing of our Americans 100%. So instead of fighting among each other, I think we have to also make sure our American friends are also aligning with the realities on the ground in terms of parameters of Richard, the let me ask you about something else. Uh, in, in 2012, there was a great degree of discomfort from the U.S. side as to how we handled Scarborough Shoal. Right. Uh, if I recall correctly, nga, parang, uh, at one point, Kurt Campbell was saying, uh, at least according to the Chinese, na parang, what are these Filipinos up to? Why are we, why are we getting dragged into Scarborough? Uh, into mm -hmm. a sovereignty issue. What are the chances that they're feeling the same thing now with what's happening in Ayungin? Well, that was supposed to change, right? I mean, uh, Richard Fontaine, these are Center for New American Security folks. Th these are people who, were, who are part of the Washington staff. They have a new book called The Lost Decade, mm -hmm. whereby they're blaming largely the Obama administration for not holding the line. Hindi lang sa Scarborough Shoal, but yung sa reclamation na ginawa ng China from December 2013. Ang daming kakulangan. Kaya nga yung ginawa ng Trump administration to say, enough is enough. We have to have some clarity. Kaya nga Pompeo came here in 2019 and openly said, any attack in the South China Sea, hindi lang sa Pacific, public vessels will activate the Mutual Defense Treaty. Pero nakikita natin, ba't yan? Medyo kapos eh, di ba? So ang ginawa ng Biden is they just carried over Trump to a certain degree, but still they, ha they have to build on this as the facts on the ground change eh. So medyo humahabol yung aliansa natin sa realidad So they the drew a line on the water. So, so my point is, <laughs> thankfully, we're not in the Obama time. Uh, you know, I told our American friends, never use the term that Obama used. Very inartful, in fact, very insulting. He said, we don't go to war over a bunch of rocks. Well, it's a bunch of rocks to you. It's part of our national... It was insulting. And I was really disappointed by Obama when he was here in 2014 to so dismissively talk about itong territorial disputes. Na yan. Thankfully, we're out of that. Pero hindi pa tayo 10 eh. So we went from 0 to 5. Ang point ko is, let's get a 7, let's get an 8. So tama well, si Ronald, well, well, you'll never get well, 10. Richard, what's, what's 10? I mean, oh, we're talking is, about where we were, yeah. where, where the U.S. was in 2012 to where... Where, where the U.S. is now. So what's 10 to you? Is it, uh, the, is it conflict? 10 to me is the U.S. coming out and saying one more action similar to like that will have a direct military is, is that we're, not getting, we're not going to ha get that. Haven't they I been saying that with every ironclad statement? No, no ironclad is what I hear they say to Emiratis, to Saudis. In fact, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm allergic so. to the term ironclad. Come up with a better metaphor or better, I don't know, uh, you know, adjectives or other. So the um, problem with Americans is uh, unless you force them and push them, Look at what Zelensky is doing. He's not even their ally. And he, he just keeps on bludgeoning everyone. Hey, well, that's an America's interest, isn't it? To make sure that the fighting is done in, in Ukraine. Because Ukraine is beating the head out yeah. of the Russians. Yeah, so if we showed you, that but, we can... But, sorry, Richard, but you, you, Ukraine is a damaged country. It's a, it's a wreck. Yeah, it, but it was supposed to be actually fully occupied two years ago. So compared to what well, could have the, happened, the, the, right? the other option would have been uh, what surrender, allow Russia to take no, over, no, allowing diplomacy to to, what to kick be, in. What would be diplomacy? And, and prevented uh, an invasion to begin with. No, what would be the diplomacy? The, well, there were there were people who were arguing that invasion could have been avoided if there was if if it was guaranteed that Ukraine would remain neutral. But Ukraine was neutral. No one in his serious mind would think that. Anyone wanted Ukraine inside NATO? Only Bush made some, you know, flip on statement in 20, 2008. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't that's Black that, Biden? That's the Putin narrative. Wasn't, wasn't the Biden administration make a uh, kind of teasing no, on no, no, that? No, no, no. Biden was very clear. NATO is not. They said we cannot stop them from aspiring to be part of NATO. But that, of course, you cannot force a country to, to say, don't even dream for it. Mm -hmm. But there was. There they was, could have said, Biden could have said at that point, no. no. I would say they actually, rather than say, actually, well, but, they but, but to be honest, I think Putin was just uh, looking for an excuse. He wanted to get Luhansk and Donetsk. The 2014 Maidan Revolution that was really the worry for Putin. So actually, I don't buy that argument. That's right. a that's a Russian narrative. But could the U.S. always do better? Of course, they could do better. The point of this is, when it comes West Philippines, thank God, wala pa rin namatay, wala pa rin nangyari. So. We have to take that win and then work it from there instead of fighting among ourselves or fighting with our ally. But that means that indeed have to be complacent. And now we have to look at the situation whereby we get closer to this definition when it comes to actual American foreign policy. So maybe it's very important for Blinken, for Lloyd Austin to tell their Chinese counterparts, this is not sustainable. Either we're going to be forced to come in or we're going to totally lose our credibility but looking, as, 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 a, as a regional leader, supposedly. But looking at scenarios, because... Diba, diba yung dinang sinasabi ng China ngayon? Diba yung dinang sinasabi nila? Parang yung hinihingi ngayon ni Putin sa Ukraine 
na we can have peace, pero hatiin natin ang Ukraine. Di ba yun na sinasabi niya? Mm-hmm. Nasami na yung Crimea, right, nasami right. na yung Donbass, pero we want more. So, we are open to having peace, pero hatiin natin yung bansa nyo. In a way, yun din naman ang sinasabi ng China. Mm-hmm. No? Na yan yung pinanggalingan ng ating mga tinatawag na secret agreement. Uh, may naniniwala ba sa atin na yung China ay aalis sa kanilang artificial islands? May naniniwala ba na yung China ay babaklasin yung kanilang billions of dollars ng artificial islands within our uh, maritime territory? No? Uh, wala, wala namang naniniwala eh. So ang tanong dito, what are we try uh, what what is being offered to us? Ang sinasabi kasi ng mga talking heads ng China, mag magkuan tayo, mag-scale down, no? Mag-scale down. Ano yung i-scale down natin? You know, Ronald, no, we're just supplying uh, a boat sa sarili nating maritime. Uh, ang sinasabi ko, yung China, ang hihingi ng China is pure capitulation. Mag-capitulate well, 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 tayo. Ibigay natin yung ating maritime territory sa kanila. Dahil yeah. 100%, hindi aalis ang China dun sa mga islands na itinayo na nila. Okay. But, na meron but, but you know, Ronald, once na, na meron ng pantalan, once meron ng uh, fighter jets, meron ng missiles. Yeah. No? So, yeah. linawin natin what we yeah. are asking. Okay. But no? Ronald, this is also very important to take note that once upon a time, not too long ago, this administration's Department of Foreign Affairs used to say, uh, I think the Secretary, Secretary Manalo, who we, we need, I, I guess we need to hear more from about, no? he used to say that West Philippine Sea is not the sum of our relationship with China. There are other things. It's not just those islands that we have to balance and consider. Well, I mean, uh, you, you have to have clear red North lines, country. right? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, iba, ibang ibig sabihin, ang ibig niya sabihin doon ay hindi usapin ito ng uh, uh, ibibigay natin yung West Philippine Sea sa China. Mukhang hindi yun. Uh, that was far from, uh, from the, the no, sa kanyang ibig sabihin. Was, well, I think what he meant to say was, I think what he meant to say is to, to let diplomacy do its work because there are other stakes uh, if we uh, go down the rabbit well, Patrick, hole with what, China. what is diplomacy? Mm. Kasi what the Chinese mm. are saying is, hayan mo yung BRP Sierra Madre ay Ma- uh, and, it, it, mag- and to give away to, to give in to the, to the elements to the elements right so we take over then the we, and then, uh-huh. kasi since we have documents from the Chinese more than 10 years ago saying all we need is hintayin lang natin ito this thing will disintegrate mm-hmm. on its own mm-hmm. now one thing I didn't mention a while ago is reports suggest despite all of this some could say kabuki show some could say dangerous show actually na fortify na natin nagawa natin mm-hmm. kailangan natin some of my met- uh, metallurgic engineering friends would say, I'm not sure about that claim. But based on the reports we're saying this, while all of this, I don't know, kabuki mm-hmm. show, what, we did what we had to do. So at least I'm glad that ginawa natin kailangan natin on the ground because we cannot lose the second tongue of We cannot lose yung position natin sa BRP Sierra Madre. So it's not like kinakawawa why, why, lang tayo. Uh, it's not sorry like for, sorry for the question, uh, Richard. Why can't we lose? Um, why can't we lose second tongue of well, why can't we just okay. give up? What's give there? Away? What's there? What's there? <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, well, this will, is well within will, our specific economic zone. It's a low tide elevation. Territorial waters. Based yeah, on that, it's a low tide elevation, so it's not a territory to be claimed. Sandy one, two, and three. Pag nagsaksid sila do sa Sandy K one, two, and three, do nila si sukatin yung kanilang territorial waters. Medyo game changer yun, Patrick. Na, pero kung gawin nila yan dito sa Second Thomas Shoal, imagine mo yung kanilang infringement. Even beyond our EEZ, no? even papasok sa ating uh, clear territorial waters. So, mm. yun, hindi siya maliit na bagay. Eh. Hindi siya BRP Sierra Madre lang. Hindi siya simpleng ayungin lang. Pero, but, it is but, where they will establish another artificial island where they will measure their territorial waters. And put weapon pero, systems pero, uh, there. Let, let me try to reframe the question. Uh, uh, if we were to try to go the, the, the way of diplomacy, what what are the options available to us without going down the road of acquiescence, complete acquiescence? I mean, no, co- co- if, we, if we talk, uh, what, so, what could we put well, on I mean, the table? What could we get? Every, we always hear, let's learn from our neighbors, let's learn well. The Malaysians unilaterally just developed oil and gas resources within areas claimed by China. China made noise, they sent ships, blah, blah, blah. In the end, 
they had to accept the facts. And then Malaysia came in and did what Manal okay, said. Learn, learn. But there's more to our bilateral okay. relations. Let's okay. talk about economics. Richard. No, no, so, so history tells you, if you stand your ground, after a while, China recalibrates. Right, right. Then right. deals okay. with okay. a we've, different we've that. Learn, learn from our neighbors. Our neighbors, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, Vietnam has put up a stand. And, uh, For 1,000 years. So right, <laughs> right. Oh, uh, they're right down China. They're a neighbor of China down south. No, Learn from our neighbors. If you will go by every statement that China has issued every time there's an incident, they have been accusing us of being uh, of playing into playing into an American strategy in the South in the South China Sea. That, so, so, okay, I see what you're my, saying. My, mm. prob, my, my my question is, maybe we should stand up alone rather than. Uh, uh, hoping that America will come to our defense. Well, my point is the reason why... Maybe, maybe that's a problem of China. It's the biggest problem of China is that there's, maybe they're not respecting the way we stand up to them. Well, my point here is kung sana binigyan ng chance yung ginagawa ni Pinoy na hindi nagkaroon ng... I mean, for me, the reason we're here is because of Digong. Because Digong spoiled the Chinese. And most likely, he gave them some gentleman's agreement talaga kung saan akala ng mga Chino, tapos ng laban, they pocketed the Philippines. I, actually, I trust China more than Digong on this issue when they claim there was a gentleman's agreement. So, my sense is the Chinese are having a tantrum moment. They're, they're really disappointed. But as we discussed in a previous uh, uh, episode, hindi lang ito usapin na anong nangyayari sa West Philippine Sea. Why can't, we stand, Why can't ito. we stand up to China on our own? The Philippines' armed forces is barely half of what Malaysia or Vietnam can deploy at this point. China will have zero respect for us if we have no backup whatsoever. And if not for the Mutual Defense Treaty, they would have already engaged in what they call short, sharp war, like what they did to Vietnam in 1988. We have to have no illusions. The reason why the Chinese well, China, are, are China using gray zone... Strong. It doesn't matter if, if Vietnam is stronger than us, but China will always be stronger than Indonesia, Vietnam, sure, Malaysia, but, everybody But else we the don't even meet the minimum threshold yet. Kaya ang argument ko is, mo U.S. alliance mo, but don't get but, too much but, into but, the U.S. camp. So that's my point, uh, Richard. Isn't that precisely the problem? The way we're leveraging the U.S. If tomorrow, uh, you because, know, we you know, go and the take bottom, Patrick, Patrick, the bottom line here Patrick, is that... Yes, Patrick, uh, when, when the tensions happened in 2012, the Americans weren't even here. Mm -hmm. There was no Ed Caden. No? Uh, nagsampa tayo ng kaso sa Unclos because the Chinese started building their artificial islands within our maritime territory. There were no Americans then. When we filed the case in Unclos, no, wala yung, yung abogado natin na kasama dito sa Unclos case, ito yung nagsampa ng kaso laban sa U.S. Uh, for Nicaragua. So, uh, from the start, we weren't leveraging the Americans. Dahil so, no, China, precisely to the point, it is possible oh. to stand up to China on our own because we did it in 2012. Yes, pero ang nangyari, nagabansi sila. They established these artificial islands. At hindi natin napigilan dahil nga wala tayong pantapat. No, kaya nagsampa tayo ng kaso sa unclos. We invoke international law. So, are, no? are, 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 telling, Patrick, are, are you telling we, me, Ronald? We, nung simula, we never leveraged the Americans. So, so no? Ronald, are Did you telling me leverage. that uh, EDCA is a consequence of mm -hmm. that, trying to really leverage the Americans. That's why we're allowing more well, EDCA sites for the Americans here that, on that Philippine was, soil. Linawin natin, Patrick, that was after the Chinese built mm -hmm. their artificial islands within our territory. No? Ang diplomatic uh, solution sa alam dyan, yung tinatanong kanina ni Ed Singaw, ay uh, pwede ba natin balikan yung nakaraan? na pare-parehas tayong nangingisda dito, right, right. pare-parehas mm -hmm. tayong dumadaan, no? nang walang isang bansa na i-claim ito arbitrarily, like dun sa artificial islands na ginawang military bases. Pag tinig mo yung artificial islands, these are military bases with missiles, right. with submarines, right, with right, runways, right, right, with fighter I, jets. I medyo, I malayong, medyo malayong malayong I, sa atin, I, ha? Yeah, I, but medyo Ronald, I also malayong, remember, you know, once upon a time... Yun yung sinasabi ko na... na from the very start, wala tayong leveraging na ginawa. But Ronald, I also like, remember once upon a time, uh, once upon a time, Ronald, during the time of Gloria Arroyo, there was more cooperation happening. Of course, you might be critical of that kind of cooperation that was being done with China. And, and sorry, I know you were part of the Pinoy administration, but it seems things turned quite nasty 
starting from that time. Well, from Patrick, time you forgot no, Mishy no, Frif. We lost Mishy Frif in 1994, 1995. During Ramos. Where the Americans yeah. left. Mm. Just two, three years after Americans left their bases, immediately the Chinese came in. That should have been a wake-up call that we cannot trust China, and that should have been also a wake-up call that we cannot stand on our own. We had the next 20 years to build up our capabilities. We didn't. At the same time, our alliance with the U.S. was also... So you had this very toxic situation of... Ronald, uh, not Richard, we can keep coming back to how uh, the no, different no, no. countries Patrick, started I'm showing you that everything that we're doing is in response mm. to China. Mm. Why are we gaslighting ourselves? No, we are don't, don't use words like China. gaslighting or disinformation. We are gaslighting ourselves. No, no. Everything we do is in response this to what China is. This is a discussion, is. Richard. We need a, we need, we need, <laughs> we need a challenge ideas here. Yeah. We're journalists here. We're not supposed I'm to agree good. with you. I'm good, so Patrick. This is, all, this is our only function here is to challenge your ideas also. I, that's what I'm saying. I think, we, we, let's not forget, when it started is when China occupied the Mischief Reef. Everything else is just reactive, reactive. Patrick, in theory, I wanted us to have armed forces as powerful as Vietnam, armed forces even just as powerful as Malaysia, and then work it this out. But we don't have it. the alliance, so make the most use, uh, use out of it. At the same time, don't get over-dependent on the Americans. It's a doable thing. The Koreans have their own headaches with the Chinese. They have their own maritime uh, problems with China and Yellow Sea. The Japanese are U.S. ally. They also have their problems. So my point is, the problem with the Philippines is always either or. We tapon natin Americano, dun tayo sa province of China. When reality is always in these fifty shades in the middle. That's what mature strategy is all about. Otherwise, kaya nga sabi ko, di talaga tayo mag-grow as a country kung hanggang, ano ba tayo, Team US, Team China? No, we should be Team Philippines, and as Team Philippines, how do we make the most? Turkey is a NATO member, and yet they play footsie with Russians and Chinese from a position of strength. Exactly, Richard. We can do the same exactly, thing. Exactly, Richard, but it doesn't seem that uh, relying on MDT is playing both sides. It doesn't seem that way. Well, the MDT is still not a final story. As we saw here, mm. we can still tweak it. We can still improve it. Allowing must... EDCA doesn't seem to be playing both sides. I think it's, it, 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 it's, it looks more like not standing up on our own, not playing both sides, but pivoting to the embrace of the Americans. The, EDCA, uh, the thing is, there's an EDCA that has to do something with counterterrorism. There's an EDCA that has to do something with West Philippines. And then there's an EDCA that has something to do with Taiwan. Kaya nga medyo komplikado ito, hindi ito clear cut. Kaya sabi ko, pwede mo i-calibrate yung some parts, yung other parts na relevant sa atin, you keep it together. Again, it's about how you also slice our own salami. This is what strategic, you know, this is what a mature strategic discussion is it's not an either or issue it's about what mixtures it's like martial arts what mixtures of techniques you put together to get the best possible outcome ako Again, ka, it's not the end ka, of the story ka, we haven't lost second thomas namatay we we fortified our second thomas so i think advantage. we should be proud of what we have hindi achieved akin, so far too para sa akin hindi yung mdt yung main eh ako masang masang uh, kaya nga tinatawag ko kanina na yung uh, transparency uh, 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 tactic is uh, a cup half full. Dahil doon nasasaktan ang China. It's not about the military exercises. Hindi sila, na, hindi sila nasasaktan doon. Mas nasasaktan sila yung global pressure. Mas nasasaktan sila doon sa threat sa kanilang economy. Lalo na, their economy is not in the best of shape. Ang sinasabi ko lang, hindi naman natin nilalagay yung lahat ng itlog natin sa MDT basket. Diba? Hindi yun ang, hindi yun ang ginagawa natin. Eh. Open tayo sa diplomacy, even within its limits. Pero... Para sa akin, ang mas malaking pressure sa China is global outrage. Ang mas malaking pressure sa China ay global economy. Okay, Dahil Ronald, I meant to yun ask yung, you this, yun Ronald. Yun yung vulnerability Ronald, I, I, before I turn over to Ed, I, I meant to ask <laughs> you this. The first time you mentioned it, that you, you're hoping that uh, measure transparency will uh, apply some global pressure on China. You, you think that's possible for a one-party communist state to care about Global opinion in, in the yes. conduct of its policy? Yes. Yes. Dahil ang, ang pinagbabatayan ngayon ng Communist Party of China are not the proletariat. No? They're not even the peasants. Ang pinagbabatayan ngayon ng uh, buong foundation ng Chinese Communist Party is the 500 million Chinese middle class. Diyan sila takot. No? Diyan sila takot. At yan yung vulnerable sa economic global pressures. No? Diyan sila takot eh. No? Ang, ang Communist Party of China, galit nga sa kanilang mga trade unions eh. Galit nga sa proletariat eh. China is the strike capital of the world. Oh, ang no, ang kanilang checked. measurement, whether 
Chinese society will survive ay yung 500 million middle class. But Patrick, ito, China ito wants to be a global leader too. Chinese society I mean, together. Yan yung, and Ronald, yan sila Ronald, let's not forget, China yan wants to be a leader too. And leadership is not just having brawn. It's about authority. It's about respect. It's about trust. So, I don't know, the Cambodians and Laos of this world, they'll, they probably really love China. But there are many fence-seaters well, here. So Singapore, there are many fence Singapore is playing both sides. Oh, playing both sides. Mm -hmm. But actually, almost all of their armed forces mm -hmm. is from Germany, NATO, right, and right, US. Right, right, right. So, what I'm saying here is China cares also about its reputation because it wants to peel away Mexico and Turkey and Singapore and Malaysia down the road all away from the United States. And they won't be able to do that if they're seen as an all-out bully and a kind of a rogue state. So it, it does well, matter, You think these reputation. countries, Mexico, uh, Brazil, mm. uh, if, let's put in Singapore, you think it's a deal-breaker for them in dealing with China that there's bullying happening in the West Philippine no, no, Sea? Honestly, Patrick, huh? there is it in the national interest of no, Singapore it's not a question of national in or, or, or the India fact that, or Brazil? But Patrick, that, this is not about sentiments and mm, love. Exactly, exactly. This is about, it's about national interest. So I, I was wondering, you, you think uh, uh, India is going to say, oh, we're going to stop trading because uh, China is bullying the Philippines there and the West is, Philippines? You see, when, when, uh, the best parallel we can find is Russia. Mm. After Russia invaded Ukraine, the Vietnams and Indias of this world stood by Russia diplomatically by not condemning it. But quietly behind the scenes, at least the Indians are diversifying. On, on, mm. on paper, they're still good with Russia. They'll still invite Putin. But behind the scenes, they're developing uh, engines of aircrafts with Boeing. They're getting cyber technology mm. here and there. And Vietnam, they're benefiting. They're benefiting. They're benefiting. But, but actually, you're, you're, slowly, they're mm. moving away from Russia. And the same thing also with the Vietnamese. <coughs> For now, it's a legacy. To, eh. But you see, there's a cost to it. Eh? So if China does something crazy here, it's not that they care about the Philippines. Yung tiwala nila sa China, believe me or not, they actually have confidence mm -hmm. in China. And China may not have shown us their good side, but China has a good side. Mm -hmm. I'll argue China has provided good benefits yeah. to a lot of countries around the world. Those Pero, countries are still Pero thinking Richard, baka China is the future. So if they do something crazy here, exactly. the fence-seaters will say, hmm, Meiji, parang ayoko na bumili sa China ng mga advanced armaments. This is Emiratis, this is Singaporeans, this is the Mexicans, this is the Turks. These are countries which are flirting with Richard. China, but they're yeah. still 100% not sure. So, And China is not Russia. Xi Jinping is not Putin. He's far more rational. He's far more reasonable. China is a rising power. Russia is a declining power. So I think sometimes we over-demonize China and sometimes we over romanticize China. China, in my opinion, is a rational rising power and responds to pressure and incentive. That's my approach. I think the problem That's with all other arguments about, is that Richard. they either over demonize no? China or think China is all nice and dandy and, and they're so you shouldn't wrong. use the word gaslighting. That's when there are no. ideas and <laughs> <That's> <laughs> views or questions that are, that are not. Richard, Richard. Or, Richard, or, Richard, or, or use the word misinformation. Yeah. Not no? you. It's or the, 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 the argument. The you know? No, no, we need to hear all these things. This is not misinformation at all. We need to hear all these things, Richard. Yes, let's just blame ourselves if we're the victims. You know what I'm talking about in China? That's what we're talking about just now. That diversification away from China. <laughs> no, ang tawag nila dyan, the Wolf, the Walmart strategy. Walmart was 90-95% dependent on China mm. before. Okay. Ngayon, 90% ng Walmart nag-diversify na away from China towards Mexico. India, yeah, Bangladesh, yeah. Sri Lanka, but Vietnam, and even oh, but Indonesia. Pilipinas, so ano? the diversification, yeah, yeah. Ronald, but palang Pilipinas. China. SM. What kind of an ally is the United States? Ang Pilipinas. Ang sinasabi ko, Patrick, <laughs> Ay, dyan takot ang China. Huh? Dyan takot sila. Economically, mag-diversify yung mundo away from their supply chain. I know, Ronald, but you know, we're, we're, oh. we're sacrificing a lot. Why, what, what, how come walang diversification dito sa Pilipinas? Eh, wala naman tayo sinasacrifice na kwan dahil ang kwalang naman natin sa China, cheap products eh. Di ba? Yun lang naman natin, no, the I'm, shoe mart. You're, you're saying that American companies are moving out of China, uh, they're moving to all these other countries, mm -hmm. they should move to the Philippines. Well, ang problema natin, mas, mas internal eh. Hindi natin, yeah. hindi natin ginabelo ng ating manufacturing industry. Yeah. Mas yun ang problema natin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ito mga bansang ito, dinabelo yung kanilang manufacturing at industry. Mm -hmm. Look at Vietnam. Vietnam kalaban ng China, di ba? Pero dinevelop nila yung kanilang education, dinevelop nila yung kanilang manufacturing, dinevelop nila yung kanilang services, etc. Kaya ngayon, sila pinupuntahan. 
Yung lagi natin right. pinag-uusapan, Patrick, na comparative advantage, right. comparative advantage. I just Yun have a question para masagot mo yan at ng ganyan. Ay, right. At para ito ay hindi problem, mo. Ito problema <laughs> ng ating relasyon okay. sa oh, US. Sige. Problema ito ng ating gobyerno. Okay. Uh, no. Mo mo hindi ko natin na hindi ko binanggit ang gaslighting ha. Okay. Oh, Grabe <laughs> <laughs> na trigger kay lahat. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Moving forward, how do we slice? How do we slice our salami this time? Hindi na tuloy yung uh, resupply. Yung Rore, and uh, it was a failure. The last Rore was a failure. Uh, what are the options on the table now as far as for example, a uh, 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 very actually very tactical question. How do we resupply this time uh, chopper? Uh, Let's use but chopper. The last time we did that, we get, we the last time we did that, they confiscated, they confiscated the, uh, they confiscated the, 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 so my worry is, it's not that the U.S. alliance is a liability per se. It's how we approach that alliance and how our allies approach us, which is creating a liability. That's where diplomacy comes in. Mm -hmm. So diplomacy is not only how we deal with China, it's also how you deal with, with your allies. Yeah, exactly. As, as Churchill said, you know, the only worst thing than de dealing with allies is not having any allies, right? <laughs> okay. So I love that quote. It right. really applies to my, us. My other right? question goes back to 2012. In 2012, we, we also had a problem with China's response to how we were handling uh, Scarborough Shoal. I remember banana diplomacy, our, our foods were rotting in Chinese ports, yeah. and then there was a cancellation of all the, the Chinese tourists coming here. They, mm -hmm. I think they were number two or number three in terms of numbers uh, of tourists in the Philippines. So there was a major impact in... Uh, There's a cost. Yeah. There's a cost. There was, a, this was, there was an economic cost. Yeah. And uh, I think that's part, a major part of the reason why uh, we had to turn to uh, backdoor negotiations. Which didn't work. Which didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Again, didn't don't work throw out, out the baby but, with but the bathwater. I, I think there are shades to everything. No, yeah. I, I think you're there, right. There are shades I to think everything. The shades, it, yeah. It's not fifty it's shades. Never, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I agree yeah. with Richard. It's never it's either not black or. and white. Yeah, exactly. It's not black and white. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's still, that's still my question. I mean, yeah. are we still have that problem? Uh, you know, if push comes to shove, delicado pa rin economy natin. Well, I mean, China exports to us more than we import from China, right? There are certain sectors who are very dependent on imports from China, and I think some mm -hmm. of them spoke out already. But I think if you look at all ASEAN countries, right. we're the least exposed to China because China made no investments of, you know, right. during Duterte's time, six years, san yung mga big ticket infrastructure mm -hmm. projects? Zilch, mm -hmm. nada, zero. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a good thing? Of course not. I want investments from China. But sana, on a, based on a new equilibrium, for me, this is birth pains. This is a transition phase. Maybe I'm being naive. Pero ang tingin ko is, if we hold our line, tweak things, do things right, in one to two years, we're going to come back and say, this was part of the you know, growing process. This is, this is the birth pains of the more assertive and self-reliant Philippines. Yeah. Sabi, sabi ng producer natin, kalma na raw tayo dahil patapos so, na. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. Yeah, yeah. Mahirap pala, mahirap pala pag wala ka sa studio, no, nagka-gaslight ka. <laughs> Sir Ronald, dapat ikaw nandiyan, dapat ano na ako sa kamila. Na-trigger. <laughs> Ay, na-trigger. <laughs> okay, tiga, tiga, baka sarang tayo ng tindahan. Ano? <laughs> Bigyan natin mga Four more minutes, okay. Uh, book. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you guys have asked this question already in the, the, the past uh, two, ano, pero, uh, di ba? Uh, quickly lang, uh, quickly lang, Ronald, uh, uh, Richard. Uh, Ako, gusto, to gusto, Philippines. Ko, gusto ko lang, Ed, Ed, gusto kong i-emphasize ulit yung Walmart framework, mm. no, for lack of a better Ay, term. Na no? <laughs> Ang sabi nila, it cannot be done. It can be done. We can diversify no, the world can diversify away from China, and that is a vulnerability of China more than the Mutual Defense Treaty, more mm -hmm. than military exercises. Okay. Siyempre, nakakadagdag yan, nakakatulong yan. Pero the economy, no, it's the economy, stupid, sabi nga ni Clinton. No? Yun, yung, yun yung mahalaga. At halimbawa, bumaba, bumaba ng 2 percentage point yung economy ng China. Imagine mo yung gulo sa loob ng China. Imagine mo yung gulo within the Communist Party. Imagine mo yung gulo doon sa 500 million middle class ng China. Doon takot ang China. Okay, Ronald, kaya, ito na lang. Kaya hindi ito usapin okay. lamang ng military uh, capabilities. Eh. Usapin ito ng economy. Okay, Ronald, ito na lang uh, for closing. 
<laughs> is an unstable China more dangerous than a stable China? Because you mentioned, di ba, pag bumagsak yan, baka some, some, some states that crumble cause more problems for its neighbors. Uh, pag nag-collapse ang China, magmamigrate yung kalahati ng kanilang populasyon papunta sa US at saka papunta sa Australia at saka papunta <laughs> sa Europe. Yun yung magiging disruption. <laughs> wala pupunta dito. <laughs> ah, wala, wala. Nandito na sila eh. Nandito na sila eh. Sa Pogo na. <laughs> okay. Oh, Richard, ikaw. Uh, last word. No, no, ako, I mean, for all of... Uh, ako, don't press the uh, panic button. This is a journey, you know, we just have to hold each other's hands as we go through this. So, uh, uh, we can tweak it. Um, we are fortifying positions on the ground. We lost no territory so far, no casualty so far. I think the Americans are coming under pressure to show their, their, their reliability. I think the Chinese, despite everything, also realize that they don't want to escalate it too much to make it uh, deadly and bloody. So ako, I take a much more sanguine view of what's happening right now. I think this is just a process and transition. Is there risk? Of course there's risk. But without risk, there's no reward. And how are you going to be a real country if you're not going to take any risk at all? But for me, this is a process. Ang tagal ng reward, ano eh, Richard eh. Well, not losing anything is a good reward. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the U.S. has, you know, we're not oh, yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. anything. Well, the U.S. Pano. is a... Because I remember in your mess. interview, ito na lang, we have a few more minutes. I remember in your interview with Ambassador to the U.S., Babes Romualdez, he said, that, oh, it's going to be dramatic, <laughs> yeah. the improvements and the capability, the increased capability of the armed forces will be dramatic in the coming years. We, well, we haven't sad, seen any of that. Yeah, sadly, we haven't seen any it, of that. it's a years-long process, but the good news is, the Philippine Coast Guard is going to get some big ones, not from U.S., but from Japan. We're buying. Japan. We're paying for we're those. Paying, of course. We're, we're paying for those. We're a richer country. We're, we're becoming an upper middle yeah, country. Yeah, but it's always better to, to get something free. But we have to get the free ones. Kaya in a new piece coming out with Nikkei Asia, my argument we're is... We're giving them access they, they on basis. To, I mean, there, there should be yeah, some the bargain is give that, them minimal right? base, get maximum aid. Mm. Hindi yung opposite na give them everything, get nothing. So, right. again, that's why it's not binary. Eh. It's really a negotiation process. Okay. Pinapalis na tayo. <laughs> Pinapalis na tayo. <laughs> Bakit nyo kasi sinama ni Ronald at ako? Hindi talaga matatapos ng discussion na ito. This is a free flow. Okay. Know? Pinapalis na tayo ng China. <laughs> well, thank you for joining pero, us, sir. No. Pero Richard, Ayan na po. Ayan na po. Ayan na po. Sige. Ayan. Last word. Final word. Monitor ko ngayon. Ha? Medyo, kanyan, medyo delikado. Yung Shandong uh, uh, st- uh, Strike Force. Uh, carrier Strike Force. Mm-hmm na gumagalaw ngayon. It's moving, ah. And everybody is monitoring it. That's the entire South China fleet of China. <laughs>